I am Andre. This is this is uh, David, uh, Victor, uh, other guy. So anyway, we tried to take something that's already existing and um, apply the uniqueness of the Neo NFT token technology on top of it, and um, we call it. Put in order. Um, so basically, the Russian government uh, currently has a specific um, procurement system. That means if it needs to buy something or it needs to build something, let's say I don't know, football stadium, or even if, it, if even if they need a service or something small, they need to hire a company. And usually, the way it would work is they would put a tender, and then a lot of companies would try to fill that tender or try to offer their services so the lowest price would win. The problem is we're in Russia and it doesn't work. Um, so a lot of money gets shifted back and forth. In the end, it's not the, the actual small companies that win, but the companies that are somehow personally related to the government or, um, yeah, or just the ones that show up and then give them the money back and nothing ever happens. Um, so basically, that's the main problem. Uh, this is a, an example. Um, it's actually a real thing. Um, it's just what do they do? So they basically a brick factory, uh, a brick factory won a tender to fix streets. <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, and, and and we want to not make that happen again. Um, this is kind of supposed to be the smart contract replacing humans. Um, so yeah, we want to automatize it and eliminate the need for human error in this whole system. It's not human error, it's actually just yeah, corruption. But um, there's, there's a lot of different different problems that go wrong. So uh, yeah, we browse through a large list of, of things, how these systems actually work. And like currently, for instance, you need a similar you need similar contract details for competing organizations. That means currently there's like someone or some cartel could go up and say, "All right, we have these ten companies, and um, they'll just they'll just compete against another small tiny company." So it doesn't really matter which one you choose; it's always that one cartel. So you need to somehow secure um, that all companies are actually from different people are legitimate companies that they actually exist. Then you have like joint, yeah. So you have joint participations of, of different organizations and various tenders. You need to make sure that these companies actually have participated in different tenders, that they actually exist, that they can do the service. It's provable. And um, are we there yet? I mean, there's there's, there's more things. There's like. <laughs> Um, there's, there's actually a problem that some of the um, governmental, it's actually real, so there, there was a page we looked through. Um, they, they put up a tender that was um, on purpose, purposefully misspelled, so you couldn't find it if you're actually looking to fulfill it, but if you're a company that knows someone, you can find it, you go to the page and then fill it out and everything happens kind of legitimately. Um, yeah, so, um, and there's, there's a lot of other things. There's like price the damping and stuff. Um, I don't want to go too much into detail with that. But basically, our um, smart contract idea would replace that. Would, would, first of all, it would automatize everything. So you wouldn't have any, um, any human intervention in, in these processes. Everything will be solved and selected automatically. Um, tenders and yeah, exactly. So the tenders are completely immutable. They will be written in, and they will not be able to change. Um, but actually, let me go through the details a little bit later. I'll show you the prototype that we built. Maybe that makes more sense um, as in how it works. Um, could you just so <coughs> we'll show the team later, I guess. Um, sorry. So. Um, this is an example of how it would look like. Let's say, let's imagine you're, you're the government and you want to set up a tender. Um, not state. 
Um, so here's our list of different tenders. So you can you can set up whatever stadium or bricks. We want to create a new one. Cool. Um, and for spoons, um, actually not r really spoons. I think fault tonight spoons. That was my mistake. It's actually like syringes, but you get the point. So. You, you fill out whether it's a buy order or a sell order. Um, you can fill in uh, information that gets hard coded under contract, and you send the tender onto the blockchain. So all of them are listed. And now, as a company, this is just a, a different view from the other side. As a company, you go in and you see okay, so there's the tenders. I have Falkman spoons, and I'll, um, I can deliver them. And then you go through. All the details, you see what it's made of, and then submit a proposal. And let's say, sorry, that jumped up. And so you can set your price, set for how long it takes. The how long it takes is actually quite important because there were also examples of these things where someone wanted to have have a street built in like two days or something. Like it was literally the time was there. So it's obviously impossible, it's just companies that already built the street and are like, okay, we've done it. Um, so give us the money. And then you you fill that out, and now you have like a real-time view of all the com competitions, like everything that's that's on the list, um, where you are, what the other prices are, who the, and then you can also bet, by the way, which would not be possible right now. Um, right, where are we going? Okay, all right, yeah, and then some time passes, everything um, does its magic, and then in the end, the tender is finished. You can participate, and the Winner is immutably on the on the blockchain. You can read it out, and you can see all the details of how it all went, and under which which circumstances the specific organization has won. Right. So um, that's like how it looks. Um, now, David, you can help me, right? Um, so basically, so we'll, how it all works and why it's actually specific to the um, the new blockchain. Give a hand for David. Please don't. Thank you. Very very um, so the uh, smart contract structure we propose is um, twofold. We have a tender contract, which is the contract that contains all the data that's related to the contract. We have a start date, end date, tender name, tender description, and a lot of other vari variables that we didn't list out here. What are, uh, what are the two? Uh, what are the two key uh, variables? So one of them is the connection to the NFT contract and what is the tender winner? So obviously this tender contract has a certain runtime uh, from start date to end date. And we propose uh, using the uh, NEO NFT uh, standard to create uh, an unfungible token for each tender that is kind of um, publicized so that we know that <coughs> and so that we have an immutable unique record of it on the blockchain. Uh, we will use the uh, divisibility of the NFT to kind of um, open it up to several uh, parties that are interested in the contract uh, in, the, in the tender. And what these would do, they would essentially be given by a central authority off chain. They would be sent parts of this um, of this uh, non fungible token. And the winning condition is in the end that at, at some point before the end date one of these uh, participants in the tender needs to hold the entire NFT, the entire token. Only then, um, only then there can be uh, the tender winner set in the first contract, which will then allow the uh, tender itself to conclude. If for some reason, because the government that is um, running the tender <coughs> says no, we, we cannot really come to an agreement with these uh, suppliers who will not allow any one of them to actually hold all the tokens, uh, hold the whole uh, token, then the tender will not be able to conclude. And it's a pretty simple uh, concept. There are some nitty gritty details that need to be figured out. Um, this is the general structure. Thanks, okay, 30 seconds uh, to go. Um, it's very important goals to save the world from corruption. Um, but yeah, actually that's it. Um, this is, yeah, this is just, the map of all uh, all of corruption statistics all over the world. Um, the logo over there it's, in, it's it's not it's not a mistake. It's it's supposed to be blue because blue is the color of the non-corrupt. Um, 
Anyway, thank you so much. Um,